Welcome to the AFC West Sports Betting Picks video here at FTN Bets and available on the Game Plus Network. As you guys know, we are going division by division through the entire NFL. We're talking about the win totals for each team. We are talking about their odds to win the division. We're talking about their odds to win the conference. We're talking about their odds to win the Super Bowl. And then we're wrapping it up with a nice little bow at the end of the show by talking about some of the best player prop bets from each one of these divisions. And I say we because I don't do this by myself right now. I bring in my partner in crime, Mr. Daquan Young. What's up, Quan? What's going on today, buddy? Benny, what's up, man? I am here, and I am ready to talk about the best division in football. This is going to be Ooh. chalk it up, throw it up, uh, I don't high-scoring affairs, good receivers on each team, good mm -hmm. quarterback play. I'm really excited. to. I hate watching AFC – uh, games, but you know, this division, I think, with what Denver did in the offseason, I think what the Chargers did in the offseason, I want to see how this all unfolds. Yeah, I mean, and listen, you know what the funny thing is? Those were the two teams who came in last place in this division last year, which just shows you how much talent and how even and how good all four of these teams are in the division. You know, Kansas City had a slow start the last season and people were were ready to bury them. They finished four and one at the end of the year. They ended up with a 12 and five record. I think they just missed out on the number one seed to the Tennessee Titans in that last week of the season, I think is what it went down to for that to get decided. So obviously this is a very good team here in Kansas City. Yes, no Tyreek Hill this year. They brought in Juju. They brought in Marquez Valdez-Scantling. They drafted Sky Moore. They got an entire new set of pass catchers out there. But as long as you still have Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball to those guys, I think they're going to be okay. Still got one of the best tight ends, if not the best tight end in all of football. I don't know. Mark Andrews may have something to say about that. But, you know, Travis Kelsey's going to have going to have another good year here. No idea what's going to happen at the running back position here. I mean, I, I guess Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is the guy. All of a sudden, there's uh, this Isaiah Pacheco guy that everybody keeps wanting to draft now that's flying up everybody's draft board. So we'll see how that works. I thought Ronald Jones was supposed to be the guy at one point this summer. And, uh, you know, apparently he might not even make the team right now. So, you know, again, Kansas City with uh, with a whole bunch of running backs they're going to throw out there. You know, you mentioned the Chargers. Like, the Chargers are that team that every year, man, just every year I expect them to be – I feel like we say the same thing about the Chargers every year, Quan. Like, yeah. this is the year the Chargers love what they did in the offseason. Really good core. All those guys are back. They're going to take that next step forward. But they never seem to take that next step forward. Listen, I love what they did. But as the old saying goes, Chargers going to charge. And we all look forward to seeing the Chargers in the playoffs. Uh, I, it was a slip up. It was the timeout that they called against the Raiders that probably would have put them, I think it would have put them in the playoffs. It kind of yep. ruined their season. But listen, going out and getting Khalil Mack opposite Joey Bosa, I think that's going to be a tandem that's going to take them to the next level. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they don't charge. Um, I, I love Justin Herbert. I think Justin Herbert yeah. is going to be one of the quarterbacks that we talk about for the next decade. Great arm strength. Uh, that throw against the Giants last season, I mean, it, it's something that stays on my mind. Uh, I, I I know the Giants fan probably have nightmares about it. They weren't in it, uh, anything in the playoffs for, for contention anyway, but it's still a hell of a throw. And I look forward to see uh, what uh, Justin Herbert does with the the guys that he has. Austin, Austin Heckler, big fan of the contributor. Um, mm -hmm. it's, 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 I'm, I'm a man up right now, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is a very good football team out there. Justin Herbert threw for over 5,000 yards last year. Like, I don't know if people realize how crazy that is. You know, like, yeah. that is an insane amount of yards that they put up. This offense is unbelievable. And like you mentioned, and they, they addressed the defense, which wasn't bad last year anyway. Like, on paper, this team just has so much talent. And it's like, I don't understand how this team doesn't win 13 games. And yet every year they're nine and eight, 10 and seven. Like, but, but am I wrong? Like every year they're just, you expect the more. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it feels like they underperform every year or what actually happens is it feels like they fall apart at some point during every single season. Like they'll start off four and oh, and then they'll finish like nine and eight. And you'll be like, what the hell happened to this team? I thought they were going to like, you know, I was expecting them to dominate and maybe even get a buy in the first round or something. And, you know, it just never seems to work out for the Chargers. And then we haven't even talked about the, the Las Vegas Raiders here yet. The Las Vegas Raiders were the second best team in this division last year. They made the playoffs. They were 10 and seven and they added Devontae Adams in the off season. Like, I mean, listen, this is another team that we got to talk about here. You know, what do, what do you think about the Raiders this year? What, what are their chances? 
I don't know, man. I I love the Adams the Adams car connection. They're hooking back up from college. Devontae Adams is still Devontae Adams. He's going to be uh, the best wide receiver in the league, I think, out there in uh, in in Vegas. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know about the their car Hall of Famer comment. That's something that I would kind of mm-hmm. I would kind of uh, brush off a lot. But I think their car, if if he can be consistent, I don't remember what season it was, but he was a, a dark horse MVP candidate. If he can play anything to that level, um, and and they have a, a, a running game or a decent defense that will keep them in games, I think that they can. I, I listen, man. Second place in the division last season, they got better. They got a better receiver. It's going to be tough, and I, I know Kansas City is kind of. Uh, the thoroughbred in this division, but I look for them to to push the pace, and I, I'm I'm excited about a lot of scoring. So that that's we, we want to see what type of numbers Carr puts up with Devontae Adams, and seeing if he's actually the guy. Well, and again, you mentioned that at the beginning, arguably the best division in football here. I will say this. It is one of the most even divisions when we start talking about the numbers. And we're going to take a quick commercial break here on Betting with Benny, and we'll be right back to dive into those numbers for all the teams here in the AFC West. Welcome back to the AFC West Sports Betting Picks video here on Betting with Benny, available at the Game Plus Network. We talked a little bit in the open about what happened in 2021. We talked a little bit in the open about what happened in the offseason. Now we're going to talk a little bit about what to expect for the 2022 season. So, Quan, throw up that graphic and let's get started here. All right, so we're going to start right at the bottom with that team that finished second and is actually projected to finish last in this division this year, and that is the Las Vegas Raiders. 8.1 wins is all that Jeff Radcliffe has them projected for, and it makes sense to me too because that's around what we're looking at out here in the market. Eight and a half is the number on the Las Vegas Raiders. The best number on them to play the over eight and a half wins is minus 110 over on BetMGM. DraftKings has the under eight and a half wins at plus 110. And you know what that means, Quan? That means we have another arbitrage situation here that we could look at. You could theoretically bet $110 on BetMGM to win 100, and you could bet $100 over on DraftKings to win 110. So if they go under on DraftKings, you wind up winning $10. And if they go over, the money that you win on BetMGM and the money that you lost on DraftKings would wind up you know, evening out and giving yourself a zero break even point. So it's basically a chance to get a risk free bet here where you can make about two and a half percent of the money that you invest here. Doesn't happen very often, but it is one of those arbitrage situations that we talk about over eight and a half wins, minus 110 on Bet MGM, under eight and a half wins, plus 110 over there on DraftKings. So this is a chance for us to get a little bit of a risk free bet and put a little bit of extra money in there. Now, again, if you bet the $210 from both of these things here, you're going to wind up winning either $0 at the end of the day, but there's no downside because you can't lose, or you wind up winning $10. So, again, not a massive profit that you can make off it. It's not It's not going to change the world here, but, hey, you guarantee yourself a 2.5% profit on any money that you can get in here. Probably not bad. And I got to be honest, if you're going to bet just one side of it, give me the under. I know this sounds crazy, but give me the under on that 8.5 wins. I just I, I don't think this Las Vegas team is better than the next three teams we're going to talk about in this division. If they go better than two and four in this division, I think I'd be shocked there, Quan. I think the non-divisional schedule kind of favors them. They play the Jaguars. Mm. Uh, they play teams like the Seahawks. If you can at least split with the – you split a game with the Chargers at home. You split a game with the Chiefs at home. You split a game with uh, – who am I Who am I leaving out there? Denver. The, uh, Denver. At home, I mean that's something where you got to find two more wins, three or three more wins, excuse me, just to get to nine wins, get over that eight and a half. I, I, I think they're going to be tough, man. New coach Josh McDaniel. I think there's no way that he could be as bad this time around as he was the first time around. I think they got weapons for a car. <laughs> Listen, I got this. I got this theory. <laughs> this theory that Belichick sends out his minions to destabilize other organizations. So um, we're we're looking at something. If the if the Raiders go down bad and and McDaniel's goes back to New England, uh, I'm it's going to strengthen that theory a lot. But it's, I think it's it, not like we haven't seen it happen before. <laughs> see, I've seen, I've witnessed it firsthand. But I think if they can pull off a couple of wins in the non divisional schedule, which I think is highly likely, I, I like the over here at at least nine wins. 
All right, so there you go. Uh, Quan is on the over. I am on the under. One way or another, whichever side you want to bet on, like I said, when you have numbers as good as this where the overlap is actually in your favor, if you have a lean one way or another, this is definitely one of those uh, you know teams that you should be betting on because the spread is exactly what we want to see out there in the market where it's in our favor as a better, and that doesn't happen all the time. So, Quan, throw that graphic up again. Let's go to the next team here, which is going to be the Denver – well, technically, it should actually be the Los Angeles Chargers – with 9.3 projected wins from Jeff Radcliffe, 10.5 is the number that's out there in the markets right now. Under, though, minus 125 at that 10.5 uh, wins out there in the market. Points bet, minus 125. That's the best number we can find on the under here. So even the market and the sports bettors and the books all think that that 10.5 number is probably too high. That's why they have the under juiced up right there. If you do like them to win 11 games this year, though, if you want to take that over, if you think that, you know, the moves they made on defense and with everybody healthy on offense, this is a team that can take that step forward. Over 10.5 wins is paying plus 120 over on BetMGM. Oh, man, I think this is a team that could win a Super Bowl, and I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't take them at plus 250, Quan, to win the division. And that's pretty crazy to me that this is a team that I wouldn't be surprised if they won the Super Bowl, but I still wouldn't take them to win the division, even at a plus 250 number. What do you think about that? Uh, I would – listen, I agree, man. It's I, I believe they got better. I think they did the, they addressed some needs on defense. I think Mac Bosa on opposite ends is going to terrorize offenses, opposing offenses. It, it's kind of scary yep. to think about that. If Khalil Mack can even be a fraction of what he was uh, before he went to Chicago, that would be great. But it's once again, it's going to lie on the non-divisional schedule. I think a lot of the cancellation of, you know, playing against the Chiefs twice, playing against the Raiders twice, I I think they're a little bit better than um, Las Vegas at least. And, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of splitting one with Denver is going to be great. But outside of that, they play teams like uh, Houston. They play the Dolphins, who I don't think is going to be uh, as you know they're going to be able to compete with Tyreek Hill, but I don't think they're going to be great. And then we're looking at uh, playing the Browns, playing the Seahawks, Jaguars. So it's a pretty cupcake schedule, and um, I like to I like victories by uh, the Chargers in those games. But they all, like you said uh, in the intro, they have times where they just slip up and they go, they get cold and they lose games that they're supposed to win. So how much? improve can this Brandon Staley team be in year two and if they're going to compete they have to win those games that they're supposed to win yep and that, and that's exactly the case here and you know what I do think they have better coaching than they've had in the past when a lot of this stuff went on there but again this is one of those teams that every year seems to underperform the expectation so we'll see if they can take that next that next step forward this year so now let's we'll throw that graphic up one more time there well actually at least one more time here Quan. This is a very interesting team for us to talk about, and that's going to be the Denver Broncos. Last year, the Denver Broncos finished the season 7-10. and Then they went out and they added Russell Wilson, which is exactly the piece that everybody said they were missing. Everybody looked and said, wow, you got some really good young wide receivers here. You got two really good running backs in the backfield here. What this team really, really needs, solid defense still, even though it's not the elite defense that it was at one point. What this team has needed for years is a quarterback and Russell Wilson is a guy who I think could actually help them out. You're going to see much better performances this year out of guys like Cortland Sutton, out of guys like Jerry Judy, um, you know, KJ Hamler basically is the other guy now because Tim Patrick went down, which is going to be a little bit of a knock for them. You know, Tim Patrick was one of their best receiver, arguably their best receiver last year for, you know, big portions of the season. So that's going to hurt a little bit, but again, they have enough depth. They have good running backs. They have, Really good skill position players. They have a really solid defense here. 9.6 wins is what Jeff Radcliffe has them projected for here. 10 wins seems to be the consensus number in the market. DraftKings has it at 10 wins. It's minus 110 to both the over and the under. Over 10.5 wins is juiced up at plus 135. Under 10, and that's at points bet. Under 9.5 wins is juiced down to plus 115 on FanDuel and BetMGM, which is why I think that 10 number is the number that we need right there. With that being said, I don't really want to take them to go over 10 and a half wins, so I'm not betting the over on points bet at plus 135. And I do think they get to 9 and 10 wins here because I do think they're at least two wins better than they were last year. So I hate to say it, but I think 10 is the exact right number. And at minus 110 to the over and under, 
I don't think there's any value there. So for me, I'm just kind of avoiding this one. Although I do think that this is a team to win the division, Quan, at plus 300. That's an interesting number to me. I think, oh man, uh, let Russ cook. That's uh, I think that's going to yeah. be the motto. I think uh, we saw Melvin Gordon come out last week and say, you know, they want Javante Williams to be the guy. They have a running game. Um, they have receivers that can, like Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, all those guys. They can press KJ yeah. Hamler. They, they're going to be able to take the top off the defense. And all that was missing was somebody to throw them the ball. Drew Lock couldn't mm-hmm. get it done. Teddy Bridgewater, he's going to play it safe. Uh, he, was it Bridgewater? Yep, Teddy B last yeah, year. It was yep. Teddy B last year. He's gonna play it safe. He he'll get you. He'll get you like some underneath routes, but uh, mm-hmm. you know he nothing that's impressive. And I think Russ has been that guy that can take the top off the defense and make those deep throws. And that's all that they were missing. So I two wins better, absolutely. But like I said, this is a tough division. Not non divisional schedule looks. It's mm-hmm. it's a cakewalk for them. So it's going to be who wins the games that they're supposed to win outside of the division, and can you at least split within the division? You know, and you mentioned something that I think is a big deal here, so I want to mention on it too and kind of ex- expand on it a little bit, and that's Russ Wilson throwing the deep ball here. You know, you look at a guy like Cortland Sutton. Cortland Sutton is a stud athlete. Jerry Judy, another one, like coming out of college. Like these guys are absolute studs. But they were getting like seven-yard, eight-yard passes last year because that's the way that the offense was running. This is going to be a very different offense this year. Yeah. They have a good ground game. If teams start cheating up on that ground game, they're going to take shots deep down the field. And that's why when we get into the player props later on in the show, you're going to see why I like a guy like Cortland Sutton to score a lot more touchdowns than we saw last year. Now, again, two touchdowns on you know whatever he had, 60, 70 uh, receptions last year. That's a very low number to begin with. So I already think there's some regression there. But the other thing about it is, you know, you look at those Seattle receivers over the last couple of years. Tyler Lockett, the last four years, average, I think it was 8, 10, 8, and 10 is what he had touchdown-wise the last four years. So averaging nine touchdowns a season over the last four. And he was technically their second wide receiver. You know, DK Metcalf as a rookie, I think he had seven touchdowns as a rookie. He had 10 in his second year. He had 12 last year. Because Russ is willing to throw the ball down the field to those guys. And guys like Judy and Sutton can win those one-on-ones down the field. Yes. So now if you have them stretching the field, it, this just makes this a very, very tough team to defend. Because, again, you have to stop the run because we respect the run game that they have. And now you also have to respect the deep downfield passing. Listen, you know how it is, Quan. You played football. You were on the defensive side of it. You can't stop everything out there. And a team that's balanced mm-hmm. and can do a little bit of everything – there's really no way to play them. You want to you want to keep those safeties deep? Fine. They're going to run all over you in that case. You want to move those safeties up to kind of help out with the run? You're going to have guys like Judy and Sutton that are going to be able to beat you over the top. And Russ is the kind of guy that's going to put the ball up there. So I agree with you. Let Russ cook. I think this is a really good team. I think they make the playoffs. They're my second favorite team in this division because, you know, as much as I love the Chargers talent, they just seem to screw it up every year. But we still got one more team that we haven't mentioned here, Quan. So throw that graphic up one last time. Kansas City Chiefs. Ten wins is what Jeff has them projected for. 10.5 is the number that's out there in the market. The under is actually juiced to plus. I'm I'm sorry. The under is actually being, uh, you know, kind of juiced up to plus 110 on on points bet here. Almost enticing you to take the under on that 10.5. I think that's the side of this that I want to be on. That's the side that Jeff Radcliffe likes here as well, with only 10 wins for the Kansas City in his projection here. The division, though, plus 175. Again, I still think the Chiefs are the best team in this division, and you're giving me almost 2-1 to one on them to win the division. If I have to take any number here, it's Kansas City plus 175 to win this division. Let me ask you this question. Do you, with losing the Honey Badger on defense, do you think that, it's just going to be outscore everybody each week. I mean, yes, that's kind of the way that I look at uh, Kansas City basically since Regardless. Mahomes has been the quarterback yeah. there. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's pretty much their strategy, and it's worked pretty well for them too. Yeah, okay. Well, I would I would absolutely – if you're going to do to say that, I would absolutely love the division play um, at plus 175 just because we know what Patrick Mahomes gives us. I think it's kind of scary – thinking about it though because you don't have that safety net in Tyreek Hill and you're going you're, you're getting a Juju Smith-Schuster who's returning from injury uh, he's on a prove-it deal one year um, you got Sky Moore shout out to the Western Michigan Broncos Coach Espo Coach Lester 
uh <laughs> The, like those, they they got Marquez Valdez Scantling. They got a bunch of guys that are are speedy and they fit that offense well. And then Andy Reid, probably one of the best coaches in NFL history. You know the offense is going to be there, but are we talking about you know fifty and sixty point games? How sustainable is that each week to get to the top of the division? Like at some point, I feel like they're going to have to play defense, and I don't think that they can they can do it consistently. So here's actually why I like this plus 175 number as well. Because I think that you can win games or at least enough games or most of your games this way in the regular season. What I don't trust with this strategy, though, is like you're saying, there's going to be a game in the playoffs where you run into a buzzsaw defense. And there's going to be a game where maybe Mahomes just doesn't have a good game. Maybe it's raining. Maybe it's really, really windy that day. Maybe they're not able to throw the ball. And the thing is, if they're not able to play that way, I don't know how they're going to win a football game. This is not a team that's going to rely on their defense. This is not a team that, I mean, the offensive line is, man, you know, for, for a team as good as they are, it's above average, but it's not great. It's not like they're just going to run behind the big offensive line and win games that way. You know, if you get, if you got to go up into Buffalo in the snow in the playoffs, I'm going to be all over Buffalo in that game yeah. rather than Kansas City. And that's what I'm saying is I don't think you're, this is why I don't want to bet them to win the AFC or to win the Super Bowl. Because with the, the style that they're going to play, they're going to win more often than not. But when it comes down to that one game and you have to get it done, I don't know if I have as much faith in this team this year as I have in years past. Not that I don't like Kansas City. Like I said, I'm still taking them to win their uh, division at plus 175. I just feel that that number is way too high. If they were like plus 120, plus 125, probably more in line with where I think it should be. So at plus 175, I think we got a lot of value on this Kansas City side. So we're going to take another quick break here on Betting with Benny, and we'll be right back with Quan and my favorite player prop bets for the AFC West 2022. Welcome back to the AFC West Sports Betting Preview here on FTN Bets and available on the Game Plus Network. Quan, you ready to do some, some blah, 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 I can't even talk right now. You ready to do some player prop bets here? Let's get this propaganda in. All right, let's get it up. Throw up that first graphic for us here. So the first one we're going to be talking about here is Juju Smith-Schuster over 74 and a half rebounds. Oh, 74 and a half rebounds. See, I'm still in, ba- in basketball mode right now. 74 and a half receptions for the 2022 season here. So listen, in 2018 to 2020, this is a guy that basically averaged over 80 catches a year, about 130 targets over those years. Now, again. He was on the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he was on a Pittsburgh Steelers team where part of that time he was also playing with a guy named Antonio Brown, who was the number one wide receiver over there. You know, Juju is coming off being injured last year, but everything we've seen so far in the preseason, the guy looks like he's healthy. And here's the big thing with this one, Quan. In the last two years, 195 catches on 295 targets for Tyreek Hill. That is the void that was left there over the last two years. This guy last year, almost 170 targets he had last year. 111 catches, I think, is what he came down with. That is a massive void, and we talk all the time with these teams. When you're looking to take it over, you want a guy that's stepping into a massive void because there's a ton of targets that need to go somewhere. I don't think all of those targets are going to Juju Smith-Schuster, but I do think he's going to get more of them than Marquez Valdez-Scantling and Sky Moore, which means he should probably be in 110 to 130 target range, which means over 74 and a half is not a number that I don't think Juju Smith-Schuster can get. Throw up that next one for us as well here, Quan. And another one, we're going to stick with the wide receivers here in this division. Cortland Sutton, over five and a half touchdowns, minus 112 on BetMGM, another one of my favorite plays here. You know, I mentioned in the open that this guy only had two touchdown catches last year, but he did have six in 2019. Uh, let's see. He was hurt in 2020, 2018. I think he had four catches that year. And again, he has been playing with some absolutely garbage quarterbacks. Go ahead and look at the list. Guys like Drew Locke, guys like Teddy Bridgewater. Again, no knock on these guys. I'm sure they're very nice human beings, but they are not very good NFL quarterbacks. Russell Wilson is an above average to very good NFL quarterback that he's going to be playing with. And he's a guy that can throw the deep ball. And deep balls turn into touchdowns. And I think there's going to be a lot more deep balls being thrown here this year. And I think Cortland Sutton is going to step up and get over that five-and-a-half touchdown mark. Even the very, very conservative FTN projections have him over that five-and-a-half mark at six. I have him closer to eight this year. 
What do you got for us, Quan? I know you got one that you wanted to talk about here as well. Benny, real quick as we get out of here. Listen, Juju is in Kansas City. Kansas City has Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has a brother, Jackson Mahomes. We are going to go over 10 and a half TikToks with Juju <laughs> smith schuster Look, he's got 3.4 million followers. FTN TikTok projections. Three, and three. I looked at his TikTok. He does about three TikToks a month. That's 3.4 per month over the course of this season. Over 10 and a half TikToks for Juju Smith-Schuster. A couple collaborations with Jackson Mahomes. They're going to hit the gritty on a couple. They're going to do a bunch of dances. Well, it's going to be out of control. Oh, man. I love the fact that you were able to get that at minus one time. Is there an alternate line for that for over 15 I, videos for like, over, like over plus 15, 170 or something? Plus 200 right now uh, at, the, at the Quan Sports book. <laughs> I'm taking all the action I can get. Oh, man. Do you do you accept Bitcoin? I'll take as much as I can get on that one for right now. <laughs> there we go. Send the Bitcoin my way. <laughs> All right, so there you go. Over on Juju Smith-Schuster catches, over on Juju Smith-Schuster TikTok videos, and the over on Cortland Sutton. Those are the three player prop bets that Quan and I like the most here for the AFC West in 2022. This is Benny Ricciardi. That's my man, Daquan Young, and we're signing off for another episode of Bet with Ben.